Hi folks. Um, I guess this little demo has one main purpose that I want to talk about, which is attention to detail. I found in my teaching that a lot of students do nice pictures of buildings or, or architectural features, uh, and they leave out some of the important things that make it a believable architectural structure. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, as you can see, uh, or we'll see in a minute, I've done some little sketches of details that people will look at. It's not all of them, certainly. Uh, Tony Couch once told, me, once told me that if you do something incorrect, while a person may not know what it is that has been done incorrectly, they will still know that something's wrong. So the object of this is to try to remember to look at whatever it is you're painting, and if it's a building or a bridge or a train or whatever, and get as many of the details, at least suggestions of those details, which I'm going to show you uh, as good as you can. Oh, there it goes. As you can see here, uh, we have a series of sketches. Um, this is a building that we're going to show. This is going to become very important in the painting that I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, it shows a post there, and it shows boards that are attached to them. The, most, most buildings are 16 on center for, for the posts. So if you're going to put a building or a board on there, it would come halfway because, as you can see up here, the other board will also come halfway and so on. Uh, the other thing we want to look at is windows. Now, I've shown a different kind of siding here. It's just plain board siding. And you'll notice the detail in the shadow. Well, that tells me or tells the viewer that it is a board that's overlapping the board underneath. Also, the windows, in this case, is a simple window but it's really not well done. And the reason is it's missing some of the details. If it's a hung, double hung window, which most of them are, they would be inclined to look like this. The lower window goes up inside, so therefore it's going to show a little bit more depth in this area here. I'm also demonstrating some bricks here. This is stucco here, and this is another kind of window. This is a one over one, this is a four over four means four panes of glass over four panes of glass. You can go up as high as nine over, uh, nine, over nine and 10 over 10 and so on. But we're not gonna be dealing with this. One of the things I've done is broken a pane of glass to show a little variation in, and I put some reflections in here to show variation as well. So and then down here we have bar, sliding barn doors. Well, this one's fine. It looks sort of like a door, but where is it? Nobody's gonna know, and nobody's gonna even know that it's wood. So here we've demonstrated or shown it as wood, and we show the hanger and the slider that the barn door will slide on. In this case, we're showing shadows. If your shadow is from this area, there'd be stepping, which is important because that indicates depth. In this case, it's from the other side, and it steps the same way. Okay, that's enough about that. Let's talk a little bit about the painting that I'm going to show you or I'm going to work on, which is this one here and it's but I want to talk a, a little bit about it first so what I've done is there's the original the original uh, paint photograph that I took of this building it was in New York State wonderful little building and here are sketches grayscale sketches that I had done of that building doing it different ways okay and it it was okay. I was reasonably happy with that. So I did paintings. I've done this painting, believe it or not, three different times. This one has the emphasis on the front and it has just the dirt road coming down. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, it didn't quite get across what I wanted to get across, which was the, the structure itself. This one shows the uh, same building with a little bit stronger road over here, uh, a little bit more detail, and, and this side of the building being dark, which is where most of the detail should be, and I, and I didn't like this little building. So I did it again, and this time I sort of got carried away with color. 
So enough about that. Let's talk about the uh, uh, the uh, this the, the one I'm going to do. Sorry for the edge the uh, dilemma there. Here is the sketch that I've done for this. And the reason I've done, I've changed the whole view, as you can see, because I want to put emphasis on this area in here, uh, which is really where all of the structure is taking place. So I did the grayscale, which is, as you can see, is pretty well done. And then I have a color sketch that I did of it, which I kind of liked as well. It didn't quite do everything that I wanted it to do, so I've attempted to make a change in the painting, which I think I've done. There's not enough, co enough reasoning for this to be the way it is, to laid out the way it is. By the way, when I'm talking about light, you see the little light there? I wasn't sure how to do it. I have built a picture of a barn or a, an actual model of a barn because I do a lot of barns. So what I've done with this is, is shine a flashlight on it. And by the way, this model took me about an hour and a half to put together out of styrofoam and foam core board. So you can do these very, very easily. But I wanted to show up the lighting coming from that direction because this is where it's going to be in my painting. And these doors are a little different, but this one is approximately the way I want it to be. And I wanted to see how the light fell on that door. So those are those two. So uh, let me get rid of this and that. And then you can see we have the painting. I've already gone ahead and done some of it. Uh, what I've done is gotten rid of the sky. I've done that and I've done the, the trees and as you can see, let me get the sketch back. I should have that here. Uh, as you can see, I've changed the trees up a bit. Uh, this was a little too dark in here. So I've lightened that up and in this area here and I've extended it out a little bit in that area. Down here I've changed the coloring a little bit to push it to the background a little bit. And I was not worried about this. I don't want people to look at that too much. You'll see though that what I have done, I've extended the building considerably. I wasn't totally happy with it the way it was because I really wanted to get into some detail into that. And over here, I've changed this door a little bit. The lighting, as you can see, I've drawn a line there for the lighting. The lighting will still be in there. This side will still be dark, okay? And you can see in the construction details, the beams for all of the structure of the barn. And obviously the barn is in bad shape. I've even shown some of the uh, beams coming out or the lath that would be there or the support for the roof structure, the tin, which is over here. So I've done that. I've changed this up a little bit in here and I've changed this down in here a little bit. Not a whole lot of change in there. I have changed this area considerably and, um, and I've changed this area a little bit. So it's a little bit different and will be in the final painting. This will be a little different than the final painting. So now we're ready to go. Uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, talk about my palette very quickly and my brushes. There's the palette. It's a uh, basic palette. It may not look like it. And there's very few of these colors that I use very much. I use basically two yellows. Um, uh, um, <laughs> Oriolan and, and uh, what's the other yellow? I can't think of the name of it. Isn't that awful? Anyway, and I use two blues, which are really Prussian blue and uh, ultramarine. I do have some cobalt in there, and I have another blue in there that I use, cerulean for sky. Uh, I have uh, alizarin crimson, and I have a uh, scarlet red, and I have uh, a, a burnt orange that I use. I have burnt sienna. I have black, uh, ivory black, and I have uh, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber rather, and Van Dyke brown, and thalo green, which I don't use too much because it gets into everything. However, if you want to make nice grays, if you mix that with alizarin crimson, you're going to get nice grays. Uh, so that's pretty much the palette. 
For this painting, I'm not going to use too many brushes. I, I will use this for some of the broader areas. It's a one and a half inch uh, flat. I have this brush, which is a, uh, a three quarter inch flat. Uh, at home, I use a little bit more. I have a smaller one. I have this for detail, which is a low Cornell ultra round. And then I have this one, which I couldn't tell you what it is. Oh, it's a number 12 round. And it works just fine for, for holding a lot of paint. So that's what we're going to work on. And I'll put this over here so I have it as a reference. And I think uh, we've talked about the detail. We've talked about the lighting and the palette technique. I've studied all from a lot of different people, including Tony Couch, Ann Pember, uh, and a, a, a few others, uh, Vladislav Yeloslav. I've taken a, an online uh, course from him, and a whole bunch of other people. I'm a member of the uh, Florida Watercolor Society. I'm a uh, or a signature member. I'm also a member of the Visual Arts Center, and I have to thank them at this point for letting us use their facility to make this recording. Uh, I'm, I'm also a member of the Seagrave Gallery. I have paintings there, and I have paintings uh, at FGCU. I have them at uh, several of the uh, hotels in town. Uh, and I enjoy working here at the Visual Arts Center because I teach occasionally. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing more of the video teaching because I think that's the way it's going to go in the future. So getting back to where we were, that's the pain. As you can see, it's considerably different than the ones I showed you earlier. This, this roof real quickly, so I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to do that really quickly. I can go right over most of it. And I'm going to make it a little darker than I had it in the original. I think I don't want that to be my center of interest. Sometimes what I'll do is look at it to make sure that there's not too much water on it. If there is, what I'll do is go back and take the water out with, with a paper towel. I'll just blot it to get most of the shine off of it. So in this case, I'm going to use my... Uh, my uh, Indigo, I do have indigo, and a little bit of uh, uh, cobalt blue in there. And you'll notice I don't worry about cleaning the brush too much. There, it's a little bluer than I wanted, but it's okay. And I'm going to try and put this in here as quickly as I possibly can. And I want to make sure that, you know, if I get it over something, it doesn't matter. It'll come clean eventually. So I want to change the color as we go as well. So what I'm going to do is add in a little bit of brown or a little bit of, actually a little bit of the sepia, make it a little bit different looking, rusty, sort of old, sort of nasty looking roof that it is. And I'll probably go along there and, and just spot it in there a little bit like that, just to make it look a little rougher. Okay, one of the things I... I teach too is that when you want to uh, do something on wet, wet on wet, the best thing to do is dry your brush out, get all the water out of it, get the color that you want, and then go back in and put it in. And by the way, I'm working it a little differently than I work at home. So if I look like I'm awkward, it's because I am. Um, so we do that. That's good enough for now. Uh, the little brush. I'll clean this one out, and I'll put it there for the moment. I'm going to take this brush, which is my three-quarter flat, and I'm going to take the same color, maybe a little bit more brown in it, and I'm going to throw that in on the dark side of this little, uh, I don't know what that's called actually, but it's used to let air into the attic of there or the second floor of the barn. So that's for now is good enough. One of the things I found very useful is layering. If I find that something isn't looking quite the way it should, it should be darker, I will layer it. I will put another color on it or another layer of the same color on it. 
I'm doing the big areas now, and there's not that many of them left. This area down here, I will use the smaller. So in this case, I want it to be really dark, so I'm gonna use a little bit of ivory black. Again, I'm gonna use some of this indigo, but I'm gonna also use some black, and I'm gonna use a, a fair amount of, of burnt umber into this because I want it to be dark. And I've mixed up my color and gotten it ready to go ahead of time. So in this case, I'm going to, and I don't really care if it's got some color in it, which it does, because this whole area is going to be done except for the barn door. I've got to be very careful because that's where my uh, shadow comes from the sunlight. So the rest of it, I can just zap this water in there real quick. I got a barrel down there. I, I just won't bother covering it. And there, I have pretty much covered the whole entire side of the barn except for the, the area down here, which will come later. So now that that's done, now I can go back with my dark color and begin putting it in. And I want it to be much darker than I had before. So I'm gonna put it right in there like this. And you'll notice this is wet on wet. And I wanna change up the color a little. So in this case, I do have to clean this out. And I'm gonna put some more blue into this and bring this into this area in here. That's gonna eventually be covered, by the way. So I'm gonna do this down here like this because I know all of that's gonna be layered later. And I'm just gonna zap this across there and down here. And now we have this feathered in down here, by the way. So I have a feeling that I need a little bit of this down in here, so I'm gonna add that in now. And then I'm just gonna bring this up like this. And that's fine. I don't really, gonna really worry about it too much. I'll just go all the way up with it. There. Now I'm going to turn there, that's the flat area. Now I have to turn my attention over here. And again, we have a building area on this one. So in this case, I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna leave this white, I'm gonna wet this whole area very carefully. And across here, nah, I'm not gonna be that careful. It just doesn't really matter, it's an old barn. And if it looks like it's old, that's good. That's what we want. So that's all done. And I'm gonna use some of the same color so I can carry it over there, only in this case, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. So anyway, we'll start with the blue here because I want that against this light color. And I'll just touch, touch in a little bit of this brown in here. So we change up the, the values of, as we go along. And then I'll just bring this along through here real quick like. And then I'll go back to my blue a little bit more so over here. And then this part of it's done. So I now have that done. Now I have to work on the areas that are, uh, like this area here is dark. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of this same color. I don't wanna use the same color. So I'm gonna clean out my brush and assume that that was white, more white. And I'm gonna get some more blue into that, a little bit of brown maybe, a little bit of that burn umber in there, and try to get this so that it looks a little different. There we go. That's done. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have to worry about it. Any of the areas that are wet, I can't touch for obvious reasons, so I'm going to work on some of the areas that aren't. This area in here is enclosed. This is obviously open. So I'm going to enclose this in there. And being that it's at a bold barn, old barns are almost always sort of gray and gray brown. And so I'm going to mix this up a little differently than I did before. And I'm going to leave it as a dark color and I'm going to put it in. You'll notice I'm still using the, the round. I've gotten to the, or the uh, flat. I've gotten to the point where I feel very comfortable. And you'll notice the structure of the 
the uh, supports. Okay, I'm, uh-oh, see that, I made a mistake. So what I have to do is take this, which I can do, and just wipe that out of there a little bit now, and then I can add that color back in there. Normally at home, I, I should have used a smaller brush. And anyway, that's good enough for now. The same thing holds true up here. Um, this panel um, over here goes through, I should have drawn that in, but I didn't, so I won't. I'll just throw it in there this way. Now this one I want to be really dark, so because it's inside the barn. So I'm going to make it a little darker. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And the same thing, this is gonna be tricky. You know what? I'm not gonna ruin that. I'll just take this brush and use this brush to do the same thing. So I'll just put that in there this way. Ah, not wet enough. This is a an old brush. I actually probably should get rid of this brush. However, it serves its purpose. Okay, that's done. Now the same thing goes through with all of this. So I want to change it up a little bit. So this one has some of that blue gray in there. So I'll put it in. And you'll notice that the board itself, the support, the, the horizontal support is gone. So I can just pop this in there like this. I'm gonna do this painting a little faster than I normally would at home because we're doing this video. So I'm just gonna bop in some color in here real quick. And it's, this will end up being probably a little more impressionistic than I'm used to doing because I'm not gonna pay much attention to, to uh, brush strokes and all of that kind of good stuff. And just, I know what the end result will be so I can go back and correct it. Now you'll notice this edge, if you can see it, has a, a sort of a rough edge to it. And that's because I made it as board siding, which was really not correct. It's not that kind of siding. The boards on a barn usually are laid, they butt together like this or like this. They don't overlap. And I've shown it as an overlap, which is a mistake on my part. So now I'm going to continue this. You add a little bit of that in there, throw that in there like that. I'm not going to worry about that edge anymore. And I'll throw some of this in here. So we got a lot of different color. Now it's conceivable in the final painting, I may have to go back and, and do some more work on it. But right now I'm going to leave it as it is. What I'm trying to do is, is we talked about earlier, is show construction. This area over here where it has all those light streaks, are boards are, or pieces of this roof that are missing in the back, and that's why they're showing through, they're showing the light through. At a later point in the, in the painting, I will put some green in there so that it will become obvious that that's what's happening. So let's go on and, and in particular, come off the rails it's just standing there in the in the field so we want to make it look like it is so in this case I'm going to get some different color into it uh, uh, some sepia and a little different construction so in this case I'm not going to wet it first I'm just going to dry on dry and come down like that and like that and then I'm going to put a little bit of blue into that now over here whoops I made a mistake see that not paying attention that was bad that's a bad one I have to go back here and take that out of there I have to take that out of there all right I saved it for the most part so now I have to come back down here like this and come down the side of the board. 
Now, I have a little trick, by the way, when you come in and have grass in there and it's already been done, if you just take from the grass side and flip up, you can do this and sort of blend it all in there and nobody will know the difference. So that's been done. And I can't do any too on that. There's this door in here. That one, I'm going to use a different technique for. I do want to, uh, to make it a little lighter, so I'm going to lift on this one. And in order to do that, I need to do that. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more than that in order to get it to lighten up. So I will just move the brush back and forth like that. Then I will blot it up. And lo and behold, there's a door. Now, at a later state, it's dry enough. I think I can do this. I'm going to support that door or support the image in the door by adding some. And this is a trick I use, by the way, I learned from, from Tony Couch. Use uh, ivory black, not uh, any of the other blacks. The ivory black uh, will not smudge. And when you put it in, it shows black. Some of the other colors that you can mix don't show black. And by using the, the ivory black, and I know some people say you should never use black. Well, I don't believe in that. You use whatever you have to use to get the point across. And that's what I'm doing here. You can see how that just pops that door right up. So there you go. There's my door. And now I know it's a door. And there's still things that have to be done in the door. But for the most part, it's done. So now I can go back in here down at the bottom. Remember what I said about going up? I'll just do this a little bit. Now that'll blend that in a little bit. Okay, so that's done, that's done. I can now go back over into this area. Now I don't want this area to be dark because it's a big area and there's a lot of uh, light that's gonna show into that even though it's on the shadowed side of the barn or the building. Okay, so what I wanna do here again is I'm going to use another brown. And, you know, this is going to seem funny. I got this brown. I don't know where I got it. And I looked at all my tubes of paint, and I can't find it. So I have no idea what it is. However, it's a nice brown, and I'm running out of it. So if anybody knows what that is, let me know. Anyway, um, so I'm going to use that, and I'm going to mix a little indigo with it. By the way, let me show you a little trick. I don't know if you can see my palette. I'm going to bring it over here so you can. little trick that I found that really works. You'll notice me from time to time going in like this. What you'll notice I'm doing is if I'm mixing or picking up another color without cleaning the brush, I go in on the bottom of that color and pick it up, right? So that way if I need the pure color, I clean my brush and get it from the top of that. And that goes for all of those colors. And it works. That way you don't have to clean your brush every time if you're in a hurry to do something. So we've got that done. So let's throw this in here real quick. That's, that's going to be our dark color, okay? And you'll notice I'm leaving the structure of the barn to, to, to go uh, as it should be in... I'm going to put it in a lighter color when I get done. See how I, that's some of why I like a chisel brush or a flat. Look, look at all the neat things I can do with this. Just by using that same brush. Now, at home, I would turn my, my painting a little bit to make life a little easier for me. But in this case, this will work, so. There, that area is done. Now I have to do that other little area. So I'll take this brush and use this round that I have and go back in and pick it up and put that in there. So this will just go in real quick. And 
And I'll get that little corner there. Believe it or not, there were times when I used my left hand as well. It's easier. And in this case, it's done. That's good enough for now. Now we have these dark areas up here. And I'm going to use that same dark color because it's inside. I think I can do this. This is maybe feels still a little wet. So, um, okay, let's do this real quick. Like, I'm going to need a little bit of that. And we'll just bop that in there. And in there. And in this case, I've left one of the beams in there. So I can do the bottom of that one. The end of a board, a horizontal board, will always end on, on a beam. That's how they have to nail it. And if there's a short one like this, it means that there's, another, you see the beam? Well, you will in a minute. The beam that's there, there's another one there. And that means that that's what's, where that's being nailed. Okay, so let's go back and use this for the final on this one. I got that. This is not dark enough, and I can tell that already. So later on, I'll go back and darken it in, but not now. I have to tell you that at home, I work on a board that's slanted like this. This board is not as slanted as I'd like it to be. Uh, the slant is good because it gives paint a chance to run down. However, I'm going to show you this clip. Notice this clip? It's, I bent the back. And the reason I've done that is that this way, I, it will give me a little bit of an angle on it. I'm not flat over here. Little trick. The other thing I meant to mention, this is 300 pound arches. I usually work on 140 pound, but I'm beginning to change it over to the to the uh, to the 300 because I found that I it will retain the water longer and it, it actually works better for me. Okay, so this side of the building, except for these, which I can't do now, and this little roof area is I can do that just to show you how we do that. I'm going to use this bigger brush for this. Mm -hmm which is maybe not such a smart idea. A little more black. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to put in those areas in here. And you'll notice the area that I'm leaving is the beam, the beam structure for the, for the uh, for the roof. And down here I've left a couple of light areas for the light that's shining through from the back roof. So there, that's done. Now it's not completely done. There's more that has to be done, but that's done as far as that part of it's concerned. So that's done. Okay, now let's go on and look at this over here. We can go back to that. How are we doing on time? Uh, thank you. I don't know what time we started. About, we've been about least a half hour. Pardon? At least a half hour. In okay, so we got a little more time. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to do this in a little different way than I might do it at home. Ah, what the hell, I'll do it this way. So I need some more blue. So there I go underneath, get some blue in here. And I want to put in this door. And I'll dry out the brush so that I can do this a little bit. And then I'm going to do the other door down here the same way. And again, we'll brush it up like this out of our weeds. Okay, and then there's this door over here. And this door, 
is going to be a little different color, not much, just change it up a little bit. And if they were in a real situation, like a real barn, they may not be different colors than the rest of the building. But for the sake of being different. Now, again, I'm just going to brush that up a little bit from the bottom. Yeah, that's done. So we got the doors done. Now we let those dry. And while they're drying, we'll go on and do something else. So this whole area up there has to be dark. For the sake of this demonstration and the time, I'm not going to do it, uh, all, of the, all of them. I'm going to do a couple of other ones just to show you how they would be handled relative to the structure. In this one, you'll notice these lines in here. That's the, the roof. These are the, where this edging of the roof was blown away or, or got destroyed or rotted away. I don't know which. This is the underside of the roof. So I'm going to take this and I'll use this brush and I'm going to use a lighter sepia, which is a warmer color. And I'm going to just throw that in there real quick. This is not the shadow. Now, I know some of you are saying, gee, you're covering up some of your construction lines. Well, that's true, but I know where they are, and I know how to fix it, and I know how to get back to them and make them look like they're supposed to. So I'm not going to worry about it. So that's that, and there's still a shadow that has to go in there, which obviously I can't. What I can do, remember I showed you the picture of the barn, uh, and you'll notice that on that barn, like his here, the shadow from this went this way. And it did because of the light shining on this area. And you'll notice I've left that light. Now, I can go back. No, I can't. That's still, this is not dark enough. So what I have to do on that is probably throw a little bit more indigo into that and just go back in here and just pop that in. Remember, I said I layer. So there you go. There's a, there's a quick layer on that one and a quick layer on this one. And that's good enough. It'll get the point across. The rest of these are fine. Um, going back to this detail, there's a board that's falling off. So in order to show the board falling off, you'll have to pardon me turning that. i got to be careful I don't put my elbow in that. Uh, I start out with a thin line, and I go to here. Then there's a beam, so I go to there, and I just darken that in. That's the inside of the, of the, uh, the barn showing black. Okay, so that's done. You'll notice that same beam is down here. Okay, now I'm gonna color that one in just to show you how you get around that. What you do is you take uh, 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 new. It hasn't been out in the weather that. So you can see we just put that in light. Now let that dry a minute. And while that's drying, I'll do the one up here as well. All right? So, I mean, you may think it's silly. You don't have to do these things. But it helps to add dimension to the painting, which I think is important. So I've done that. Now these over here, they're in the shadow, so they're going to be a little on the darker side. So I'll use the same color, but I'll add a little more blue to it. And I'll just sort of come back over those a little bit. And I'm, just, I'm really doing this in a, a little too fast probably, but nonetheless. Okay, now this edge here is really in the light, so I'm going to leave it light for the, for the moment because it defines the edge of the building there. And these boards are done. They're, they're not center of attention, so they're laid back a bit. There's a couple of white spots I want to get rid of. Uh, so that's done. So I don't have to worry about that. So 
I can go on and continue. So over here, again, I'm not going to do this door but it would have black in it. I am going to do this window. And the reason for that, and I'll use the small brush for that, is to show you a little trick there. Which, because of the shape, and I hope you can see this, um, if I take this and I bring this down at an angle, you see that little triangle there, and then a straight line down here. That's the inside, there's no glass, no panes or anything. But that little triangle automatically says that there's light shining in there and that shows the angle of the light and it also shows the structure again, which is important. Okay, so that's that little thing done. Uh, I, as you can see, I'm skipping around only because of the time involved here. Um, and a lot of this you'll see as it comes true. Now this should be dry. So now I can go back and do the dark side of that. So I'll use this dark, darker brown, little burnt umber. You know, watch what I'm touching here. And I'll just throw a little bit of that in there. Now we have a structure. Now I can go up and do this one too. And it's going to be dark. It may be too dark. Uh, if you think it's too dark, you can lighten it up a little like that uh, and leave the beam white. Now, important part of this is if I take, and this is an awful small, I should have done a bigger image of this. If I take this brush and I drew a black line across there like that, right? Now it gives dimension. That here. All right, that's my beam. Right, and I have a board there and a board there. So I fill here with a lighter color, right? And this one over here, the darker color, they may bleed together, so you'll have to bear with me, right? But this is still a board there. How do I define that as a board? Well, in this case, it's small, but you'll see in the final painting later that it does work. What I do now is take this black, and it's going to bleed. I'm going to tell you that right now, so just bear with me, but I want to get it across to you. You know, it, there has to be a shadow. The sun's shining over here so it's, and down, so it's creating a shadow. So there's going to be a shadow right in there, right underneath that board, right? So now do you see that? And then this is, as I said, it is the underside of this, this board. And this is the top side of the other one. This may be a little darker in here. And if you feel you want to make it a little darker, you can. However, I made it darker to show you, but I don't want to make it too dark here because I want the inside of the building to be dark, darker. Okay. So there's your, there's your, uh, example of how to do that. I know it looks funny, but if you look at it in the building itself, it begins to make sense. Uh, I can't go back and demonstrate it any more than that at this time. Let's see, I'll put a little in there. And I just laid my hand in the old paint. Way to go. I do that a lot. Adds to the painting. So, the other thing I talked about and I'm going to do it now because I can, is details. I'm going to do it on this door. Very important to get details. I don't have my fine brush with me, so you're going to have to bear with me uh, for a moment. Uh, I do like to take and show the boards in, in this. This is dry. This is dry. So what I can do is come down here. This is, has to be cleaned out. But from there down, what I can do is... is change up the color a little bit and come down like this with the board. That board is a different color. It's a different wood that was used. And then I can add that same color over here, right? And then I'll throw in a little bit of blue, blue gray next to this one, right? And I make it a little darker and so on down here. Uh, and I can do the whole thing that way. Then to finish it off, which I'm not going to do right now, but I would, 
you still have to have the hooks up here. These are the sliders that are used to go onto the railing, which I haven't put in yet, which would come across here as a black line because it's a piece of metal, okay? And this would be have a, a hanger on it and a hanger on it and a hanger on it to support it to the barn. Now, am I getting too complicated here? No? <laughs> okay, so we've done all of that. And now we have a shadow we can put in. And in this case, I'm going to use a, because it's a metal roof, I'm going to use a little bit of the, the rusty, or the, there you go, that's the color I wanted. A little bit of the rusty color in here. And I'm just going to bop in a real fast, Now, what I normally do at home with that, because I'm lazy, is I'll take this and just do that, smear that in, because I want it to get lighter. So that's done. So that's how we get that shadow. This shadow down here we have, that's the one that I screwed up. I think, because I have clean water here, I can save it a little bit more by taking this brush and wetting it a little bit and maybe it wasn't too staining a color and I can get most of that color out of there. So there it is. Yeah, it's good enough. Nobody's going to notice it except me. Okay, so this side of the building, except for this. Now we've got these. These are inside the barn. So because the background is dark, right, I can just go right over this whole thing like this and across the top, which is the structure to support it and go down like that and zap up like that and it's done. So that, and then I can go back in later and add a little bit more dark toward the top when it dries because it would be. If I'm worried about there being a water, water showing, I can do this and just go over it all a little bit, which just gets rid of any brush strokes maybe that show and if they do, I don't care. So we've got all of that done. Over here, we have the same situation and I'm not gonna get into it. I think maybe I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, the only thing I wanna show you is how I do lines. Now I know some people draw them in freehand, but at my age, freehand is too shaky. So. I'm just going to put a few lines in. Well, this is my antique ruler, by the way, that was used by my grandfather, who was a Hudson Valley artist. So if I want to put board lines in here, I have to line the board line up with the already open boards, right? And so I have to come across and do that. Whoops, see that? There's a board line. There's another board line. I can then come down here and throw in another board line and so on and so forth. I don't want to put in every board line, but I'll put in most of them. Over here, in order to show the metal, I have to have a line running down there. So there, that's, that's in. Up in here, there's a, a roof or the, uh, the, the ventilator system, and I can throw those lines in just by drawing them in a few at a time and maybe even showing a, an open area where that's been broken. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, now we have the shadow area. I'm gonna do that real quick. In the shadow area, in this particular case, I'm gonna use the blue, mostly blue, cobalt blue, so that I get a nice vibrant color in there. And then I'm just going to take it and start down here and I'm just gonna take my brush and twist it so it fits the area and go straight up like that to the edge of the other. And that's that shadow, that's done. So there's a shadow on this one as well, but I'm not gonna do it. So at this point, I think I'm gonna end this demonstration and show you the final painting, if you're interested in seeing that. 
So let's look at the final painting. Here comes the final painting. And you can see there's some differences than the one I've done over here. Or this is it's pretty much the same here. I like this shrubbery a little bit better here. So there's things that I can do that will make it, you know, uh, a finished painting, which I will do. At this point, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next convention.